let's talk for a second about why you feel so weak in Diablo 4. I get comments all the time and friends even telling me they feel weak for the content they're doing and it's not as fun as it should be. It's not irregular to feel weak, especially at pivotal points in your D4 character's progression. The two most notable moments when you're going to feel exceptionally weak are when you jump from World Tier 2 to 3 and World Tiers 3 to 4. When it comes to power in Diablo 4, there's a few critical things that you need to understand and in this video I'm going to try to break them down for you as clearly as I can so you can feel stronger and have a better time in the Sanctuary. So I first want to mention your build for a minute. In Diablo 4, you can choose between a bunch of skills, glyphs, paragon points, stat weights, and etc. And when you bring together all of these components, you're going to create what's called a build. Your build is really important. Whether you make up your own or you follow a guide, ensuring that your build is coming together all around from your paragon board choices, skill node selection, glyph damage amplification, and gear stat lines is what's going to dictate your strength. Let's say, for example, I'm playing some arbitrary build, right? This build focuses on dealing vulnerable damage and ensuring that we're critting. If you aren't taking stat lines to enhance the key components of your build, you're going to feel extremely weak. And if you aren't taking skill choices to make enemies vulnerable, your main source of damage amplification isn't being satisfied or applied to enemies. And finally, if you aren't enhancing the properties of your build with your Paragon board choices, you're going to feel extremely weak. Fortunately, there's people like me and other players in the community who obsessively test things and put together builds to try to save you some of the legwork. But even with those builds, it's important to understand how stats work in Diablo 4, no matter what build you're playing. Since I'm currently rebuilding my rogue to fight Lilith, I'm going to try to go through my process and talk about some of the pieces that I'm holding on to to help you identify upgrades and try to understand the thought process that goes on when you're looking to upgrade your gear. First, I want to mention upgrading your gear makes comparing gear really difficult because when you upgrade your gear at the blacksmith, not only does the item level and the armor value or weapon DPS go up, but additionally, the stat lines all get scaled up. So when you hover a piece of gear, you're almost always going to see lower numbers on pieces of gear that aren't upgraded, which makes identifying the upgrades even more challenging. So now that I've explained how everything works, I think the way that I can help you the most is by going through my gear and showing you how I would look at gear when I'm trying to compare items for a build that I'm about to swap to. To get the context out there, the build that I'm doing is focused on poison imbuement and doing poison damage. Additionally, I'm gearing my character to fight Lilith, which is the final uber boss. And when I'm looking to swap to this build, I need to understand what kind of attacks I'm looking to live through. A few things that are helpful on Lilith are dodge chance, which lets you dodge attacks in the second phase. And then we're also looking specifically to make sure we can live through her melee attacks. So what that means is we'd like some damage reduction from close enemies. We'd like overall flat damage reduction and even armor is fine. But the biggest thing in this build is I actually want to sacrifice some of my defenses for offensive values because with Lilith, it's very important that when you get a chance to damage her, you're doing as much DPS as possible very quickly. But let's go through some of the gear together. So I wanna first talk about this amulet I found and why I'm gonna swap to it. Now I know most of you probably aren't gearing up to fight Lilith, but the reason this is going to help you is because now you understand what my goal is and what I'm looking for when I'm looking at gear, right? Let's say you, for example, you might be trying to push nightmare dungeons or you wanna be able to kill bosses faster or you wanna be able to do world content faster, whatever it is. Let's say you want to move around the map quickly. What, whatever your goal is, your gear is what's going to enable you to do your goal, right? So when you're looking through your gear after a dungeon, you need to think, what kind of a build do I need to get pieces for? Am I trying to farm dungeons, kill bosses, do world content, whatever, right? What am I trying to do and how can I make it better with my choices on my stat lines? Now, this amulet serves my build very well. Let's talk about each stat line one by one. First, we have Ranks of the Deadly Venom passive, okay? This passive here, you can see in my skill tree, if I max this out to 9%, those extra two points, which when I upgrade the amulet will turn to three points, is going to give me another 9% poison damage. And since, like I said before, I'm focusing on my poison damage, this passive is probably the best that I could have gotten. Then the movement speed. Why do I want movement speed? The only way you're dying on Lilith is because you're too slow and you're not dodging certain things. So movement speed is a very valuable stat line. You can see I have it here on my boots. To break that down, movement speed, very helpful for what I'm looking to do with my gear then we have total armor and damage reduction which one would i want more well on lilith i'm not really dying to her elemental attacks i am but most her elemental attacks are just one shots so mitigating them isn't that important 
What's the difference between armor and damage reduction? So if you open the materials and stats page here, you can actually go through each stat line in the game and see what it does for you, right? One stat line that's kind of confusing for a lot of people is damage reduction. What does it do? Well, as it says, reduces incoming damage taken from all sources. So that's not just elemental damage or physical attacks. It's every single type of damage is being mitigated by this percent. But it also says as the stat increases, additional bonuses become less effective. What that means is the stat line has diminishing returns at a certain point. So percentage total armor is actually a really nice stat as well. You can see here, this piece has 10.5%. I currently have 72% on Lilith of the physical damage taken reduction. Then let's say I take this off, okay? My armor drops here. You can see I lost 12% on the physical damage reduction on my armor, right? And for my purposes right now, I value the total armor a little bit more, not just for the Lilith fight, but in general. So I personally am gonna keep the total armor. Either stat could work, but understanding the little nuanced details like that is going to be very helpful long term. Then let's talk about some more damage focused things, right? Let's talk about a weapon I have here. The last Nightmare Dungeon I ran, I got this bow. This bow has four subjective stat lines. And when I say subjective stat lines, it means that I need to apply a certain status to my opponents before I benefit from these stat lines. Generally speaking, me myself, I don't prefer these types of stat lines. My favorite stat lines are dexterity, core skill damage, vulnerable damage, and crit strike damage. The reason is because those stat lines aren't extremely subjective. They are in some ways like, yes, with vulnerable damage, I have to make an enemy vulnerable before I'm benefiting from the damage. But with my build, I'm always making them vulnerable. So that's basically a non-factor status that I have to apply. Then with crit strike damage, I have high crit strike chance. So I'm almost always critting. So that crit strike damage increase is a very, very nice multiplicative damage increase. Same with core skill damage. I don't have it here on my bow, but I'd like it. Core skill damage is a non-situational, non-status dependent damage line. And then the same with dexterity. Dexterity is also a non-status dependent damage line. You can see here on this bow, I have four dependent stat lines. Damage to crowd controlled enemies means I have to make sure I'm CCing enemies constantly. And with the build I'm running right now, I'm not CCing enemies very often, but there are rogue builds that do. Then damage to close enemies. This is actually a pretty good stat line. That's not a hard status to get. If you're playing Twisting Blades or a Rapid Fire build, you can make sure you're close to enemies. So that stat line, not bad. It's pretty hard to make enemies frozen, especially with the build that I'm running. I'd have to switch up a ton of stuff and run Penitent and Greaves to actually freeze enemies. And then with the build I'm running now as well, damage to enemies affected by trap skills is something I'm not doing. So that stat line doesn't help me a lot, but it could if you're running death trap and poison trap. The reason I'm going through each of the stat lines one by one here is to hopefully help you understand how the stat lines work in Diablo 4. If you follow build guides, right? Most build guides and including my own build guides, I always go through all the gear and what I'm running and what your four ideal stat weights are on every piece of gear. I do that in every single video. But the problem is Finding a best in slot piece in Diablo 4 is really hard. I, I like I, I've played my level 100 rogue and I understand the gearing system pretty well. And I don't have best in slot gear in every single spot here, right? You can see my bow here, not best in slot. Basic skill damage, not great. I'd like that crit strike damage with imbued skills to be crit strike damage, okay? My sword here, I would like the basic skill damage to be core skill damage, right? And these are very minor downgrades, right? Like I do have really good gear, but I don't have best in slot gear. And the reason I'm highlighting that is because if you only know the four stat weights that you could get on a piece of gear that makes it good, you're going to bottleneck yourself pretty hard on finding upgrades. Me, myself, I understand about seven to eight lines for each build that I play that's going to help me. So that's going to enable me to, while I'm leveling and while I'm finding gear, understand the benefits from the gear and enables me to swap builds faster than someone who might not understand the things that I'm explaining. So hopefully that gives you some context as to why I'm going so deep into explaining these stat weights. The system really isn't that hard when you do understand all the stat lines and you'll get them down pretty quick. I probably have 150 to 200 hours in and I'd say I understand just about every stat line for three classes. And once you get the general concept down, it's not that hard to go through. But I do want to talk about a, a couple more pieces here. So let's go through my helmet first, okay? We have cooldown reduction, poison imbuement, dexterity, healing received. Okay, let's turn this off so it's not confusing anyone. That's the helmet that we're looking at, right? This helmet is actually very good. Like I said before, my build is focused on dealing poison damage, so the poison imbuement is very good. Dexterity as a stat is my main source of damage. If you hover dexterity, you can see what it's doing, right? Not only am I getting skill damage, but like I said before, dodge chance is very good for the Lilith fight, so I'm actually really happy with my dexterity being high. 
And then cooldown reduction is really nice because on Lilith, I want to make sure I have my dashes up and I want to make sure I have my poison trap available to keep applying my poison on Lilith. Now, the only stat line here that's not good is healing received, but every piece of gear, it's super rare to find a piece of gear that's going to have four best in slot stat lines. You're almost always rerolling one of your pieces. And if you're wondering how you do that, most people know this, but just in case you don't, if you want to change a property on your gear, you're going to come to the occultist. You're going to put the piece of gear in you're going to pick the line you don't like let's say for example on this one i don't love cold resistance you press enchant you need one forgotten soul and i do want to mention here this gets very expensive i'll show you my most expensive piece of gear right now you can see i only have 10 million gold because i switch my build all the time and i'm spending gold constantly but my bow right now is up to 8.3 million gold to do one reroll on it so this process can get really expensive if you're not getting lucky early on but anyway enough of that let me go through a couple more pieces like i said the helmet great example then let's talk about some not so great examples right maybe this chest piece as a general rule of thumb in diablo 4 chest piece and leg pieces should almost always be defensive pieces unless you're going glass cannon which i will admit in this build i am going glass cannon that's why i wanted to preface with that you want to have defensive values here because at a certain level of content you're just gonna get one shot if your defensive values are too low Trying to put every single stat line you have into offensive value is going to be great. Your damage numbers are going to be really high, but you're going to flop. You're going to get destroyed. You're going to get looked at by one crossbow and get shot and die in any sort of difficult content. In this video too, I wanted to briefly mention, I know a lot of people ask for Paragon boards and they want to, you know, follow a build guide's Paragon boards. But in my opinion, as a player, you should be looking at the Paragon board and trying to understand it, okay? Because I find myself a lot, like I might have this one Paragon board that's uh, like, this one's a bad example. This is like a filler board. I'm currently in a weird point with my build. You can tell I'm not even applying my 12 Paragon points I have here. But any player who cares about Diablo 4 and actually like enjoys the systems like this, you should look into the Paragon systems because for example, let's say I want to go push a uh, level 75 Nightmare Dungeon, right? And as a rogue, I get one shot, okay? I could swap off of some of my damage options here and go for armor. Or let's say I'm I'm struggling with elite damage, right? I, boom, I could go for Hunter Killer. Let's say my cold resilience is low, right? I actually did this recently. The last dungeon I did was a 75 Nightmare Dungeon where the enemies were all cold. So I swapped here. Let's say I want to switch to a physical variant, right? The Havoc rare node here is really good, okay? The Paragon board is another place that you should understand. Now, following a build guide for the general pathing is very good because a lot of people have gone through the time. Like when I go through and do my Paragon boards, I'm always looking to try to make sure I'm not wasting points along the way and I'm maxing out everything I need to on my Paragon board. But even if you do follow a Paragon board, it's important to understand where you can make some changes if you're switching what content you're doing. Because again, the Paragon board, to be honest with you, is a big reason why you're able to survive in the first place. For example, let's say I want some more armor, okay? Like this isn't very efficient, but I could go and get Slayer here if I wanted to, okay? Like understanding the Paragon board, your stat weights and the things you can do in the game to adjust your gameplay are going to help you feel much stronger and much better suited to do certain content in the game. I could go into more depth on this topic because I have so many things to say about the gearing system in Diablo 4, but I don't wanna overwhelm anyone. I will say if you have any questions about how anything in the game works, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm the, the know-it-all expert but I would like to say I do know a decent bit about the game, seeing as I played it for 200 hours plus. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll try to clarify as best I can or link you to a resource like a wiki that has the answer you might be looking for. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you, make sure to sub to the channel and leave a like. As always, my name has been Valued and I'll see you in the next one.